ever since uh, the advent of the inclusive government. Uh, the bank under Donald Kaberuka has been fantastic in terms of uh, re-establishing its presence uh, in our country uh, and making sure that we, we, we catch up and we make up for, for lost time, the time that we lost uh, uh, fighting each other. So things are looking up and I'm indebted to the bank. What is the nature of that relationship? Because we do know that many of the other traditional donor nations have been reticent coming into Zimbabwe, wanting to see very key political changes, for instance, elections, probably even the exit of President Mugabe. That makes it a difficult negotiating environment. Well, and, uh, you know, f firstly, on the point you mentioned about uh, those hardline countries that are saying that, look, let's, let there be political change, Mugabe must go and so forth. I think that uh, what these people are forgetting is that there are people who are hungry, ordinary people, uh, that have nothing to do with Mugabe, that have nothing to do with ZANU-PF. We have to be fed now, we have to go to school, we have to go to uh, hospitals with medicine. So Zimbabwe has to be engaged now, Zimbabwe has to be assisted uh, now. I think the bank has uh, seen through that. It's an African bank. And what they've done is uh, they've come to us uh, through a facility called the Fragile State Facility. Mm -hmm. They've provided about six million US dollars, which has gone into our economy. But more importantly, they've recognized, the bank has recognized that uh, the key deficit in Zimbabwe is infrastructural deficit. Mm -hmm. So they've uh, agreed to host uh, what is known as Zim Fund which is essentially an infrastructural fund mm -hmm. which has received about 70 million US dollars uh, from donors mm -hmm. and this is largely going into infrastructure uh, 30 million US dollars of that is going into 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 energy mm -hmm. and another 10 million US dollars is going to go into water I suspect the remainder will go into other sectors like the railway and so forth and that's important our biggest problem right now apart from our politics is uh, our debt mm -hmm. Zimbabwe sovereign debt is about 7.1 billion mm -hmm. US dollars uh, unvalidated and it's not a debt issue it's a development issue because and because we've defaulted and unless we've liquidated that debt mm -hmm. we can't access huge seas of cheap mm -hmm. money that are available at the world bank at the african development bank at the imf and it's important that we go through a program traditionally a hippie program mm -hmm. to deal with this uh, debt and fortunately the african development bank has been one of those countries mm -hmm. uh, one of those it's institutions sufficient. that has been helping us uh, to ensure that we clear and we deal with this issue. What of sort of timetable is Zimbabwe on? Because certainly the IMF coming through would be looking at things like uh, fiscal reform and we've already seen many measures taken where you've just literally taken over control of the central bank to some extent. Those kinds of things that need to get the country back on a level playing field. Yes, I think that uh, if you were to judge us from the traditional issues that are raised by the fund in most staff monitored programs. We have actually complied with them even though there is no staff monitored program in them. We have even, we've, we're even doing better than many countries were when they were at a decision point or at completion point. Mm. So things like the exchange rate, they are not an issue in Zimbabwe because we've adopted multiple currencies. Mm. Uh, things like the fiscal deficit, we've, we've uh, attended to those. Um, the unfortunate story of Zimbabwe is that we are getting judged on things that are not economics, things that are not related to macroeconomics. So it's Mugabe, it's Zanu PF, it's elections, right. which are fair questions, but I think that uh, they must separate the issue of economics and the issue of... For an investor watching you on CNBC right now asking, why should I bring my money to Zimbabwe? You mentioned rule of law, property rights. We're talking indigenization in Zimbabwe correct. right now, where That's people correct. are not even sure whether or not uh, their businesses are going to be subject to very stringent conditions of local ownership. Yes. What do you have to say to somebody about bringing their investments into Zimbabwe and having those contracts respected and uh, the potential to create jobs, that upside potential being the center of the focus? Well, I mean, look, you know, for, for starters, if I'm an investor in New York or London, I would look at the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange and find uh, over 80 companies who are largely foreign-owned that are operating in those, uh, can, you know, in, in, in Zimbabwe. Huge, uh, you know, you know, you know, conglomerates. Uh, some with dual listing in Australia, in Toronto, in London, in jo Johannesburg. I would say, why are they there? There must be something. If you look at the statistics, if you look at the returns. 
uh, you know, you know, our growth rate this year is 9.3 percent. Mining will grow by 44 percent. Agriculture by 23 percent. The returns per dollar have been huge even during the hyperinflationary period. So I would look at those things, but I would also look at the political problems, and I would adopt a long-term attitude towards Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is not going to be a short sprint. Uh, it's not a Usain Bolt, uh, uh, you know, you know t territory. It's Gabriel Elasai It's a marathon. If you want to invest in Africa, if you want to invest in Zimbabwe, you must adopt a long-term approach. And that's what I would advise uh, any person sitting in London, in Hong Kong, in New York, in Washington.